Welcome back to 8701. So in this section, we look at electroweak unification. So the aim is to combine the weak and the electromagnetic interactions. The issues we can see here are, first, the strengths of the interactions are very different. Um, this can be mitigated by the fact that we have heavy gauge bosons involved, and we have seen no heavy particles as being used as mediators kind of um, change the strength of the interaction. So this might not be a big issue. The second problem is that the structure of the coupling is very different. We have seen for QED that there is a vector coupling and for uh, the weak interaction that there is a vector axial coupling, this one minus gamma five, this vector minus axial coupling. So one way to, um, to uh, mitigate this problem is to simply absorb this one minus gamma five term in the definition of the particle spinors. Uh, and I have to warn you, this is a little misleading and I think that led also to some of the confusion we had in the class before. So what we're doing here simply is we take our spinor and we project out with the one minus gamma five term what the left-handed component of the spinor is. Um, this is just a projection and the definition of this. And we can do this for antiparticles as well as for the right-handed components um, as well. Good. So now we can look at the currents again, and we look at this weak current, um, <clears throat> which you have seen we can write as, you know, our antineutrino here, gamma mu um, times one minus gamma five half times E. Now, if we now um, define our particles with gamma matrices, we find that Oh, this simplifies quite a bit because we now find the current which can be simply written as a vector current. So we mitigated this quite nicely. So what now happens to our electromagnetic interaction here? So we have an electron coupling to a photon. We can project out the right-handed and left-handed component and then we have to add them together again. Um, when we do this, we find that huh, there is um, component of the left-handed component, or the current corresponding to the left-handed particle and the current corresponding to the right-handed particle. There's no mixed term here um, because of the way um, gamma matrices or gamma five matrices multiply. So that's nice. This also explains why the helicity is not changed in QD. We basically see this um, from the algebra involved in those equations. Good. So far, we haven't done anything. We have just change the notation. So we can go one step further and reuse re the uh, concept we introduced when we talked about QCD or the strong isospin. And since we can nicely describe those currents here of those particles, we can maybe see if we can uh, write a neutrino and an electron as part of a duplet. And when we do this, we rewrite the current, the positively charged and the negatively charged current as simply the left-handed components of those uh, of those um, of those duplets, I introduced a new matrix here: tau plus and tau minus, and they're simply combinations of tau one and tau two, which are in fact the Pauli matrices. It's just a relabeling as well. So there's a lot of relabeling going on, not to confuse you, but we have simply written this current, this positively charged weak current, a negatively charged current, um, where we rotate a neutrino into an electron or an electron into a neutrino using the weak interaction. Great. So now we can write um, this current here as a third component of this current. And we see when we write down the third component of this current using tau three here, we find that something look, something which looks like a neutral current, right? So this is something like a neutral current where we have a neutrino coupling to a neutrino and the left-handed electron coupling to a left-handed electron by a vertex vector where there's an interaction with those going on. This is not quite the full story yet. Uh, let me remind you about the definition we used also in isospin, which is the uh, gelman nishima uh, equation, which uh, connected the electric charge to the isospin in the strangeness of the particle. And we do the very same thing. We have an isospin component and a so-called hypercharged component that's similar to the strangeness we had before. Um, 
and Q is the electric charge of the particle involved. And so with this, we can now define an iso a hyperspin uh, current, which is given as two times the electromagnetic current minus two times the third component of the um, the third component of the, the V current here. And so now we find interesting effects here. So there's a new component which also couples the right-handed particles. So the missing part here, some of might have seen this already, that this neutral current in the upper equation didn't didn't connect or didn't have a contribution from right-handed particles. And since there's right-handed electrons which couple to Z boson, there needed to be um, this kind of additional term. So now we have a current which includes the right-handed particles as well. So that's great. We can generalize this by writing those duplets for all particles we know. There's an additional kind of caveat here. We haven't talked about this too much. But we have to consider the fact that mass eigenstates are not really the same eigenstates which participate in the weak interaction. Right now we can ignore this. We'll later come back to this question. And then we can write the three components of our um, isospin current and our hypercharged current as well. Note that this uh, EM current here is our electromagnetic current. Good, so now we, we wrote this and we find some somehow very close a consistent picture. We find that there is a, a charged current and then there is a neutral current um, in the weak interaction. But what we actually wanted to do is combine the weak interaction and the electromagnetic interactions. Now let's look at this again and start over again. So we have a, an isospin current here, which couples to the three components, the triplet, the isospin triplet. So this is a W1, W2, W3 triplet. And then we have the singlet here, which couples to the hypercharge. Very good. So now if I try to identify now components which we already know, the first thing we can do, we have to make sure that we find our, our W plus and W minus bosons again. And they're simple linear combinations of the W1s and the W2s. And then the next thing I have to do is I have to find my electromagnetic interaction. And we can do that by finding um, this A, this is a photon as a linear combination of the third component of our triplet, isospin triplet and our singlet. And what you see here is that um, there is actually mixing going on. So we basically rotate those with this mixing angle, which we already introduced, sine, sine omega, the weak mixing angle theta, theta omega, theta, sorry, theta w. Um, so we find that the photon can be made out of the mixing of the third component of the isospin dip, uh, triplet and the singlet component um, B mu. And similarly, we can find the Z boson as the other component in this mixing, the other state we find in this mixing. Um, the way we find those mixings here is through the couplings we, we already know. So we find this omega G times um, sine uh, theta W is equal to G prime uh, cosine omega W, and that's equal to the electromagnetic coupling. And then similarly, we find a solution for GZ. So what we have seen now is that apparently we are able to combine um, the weak and the electromagnetic interaction by mixing and by introducing um, the weak isospin and by mixing isospin triplet components with a singlet component. And so we find a picture which is consistent with the W plus, the W minus, photon, and the Z boson. So that's very nice. 